As you might have noticed from our recent film on the Lancia Aurelia B20 GT Outlaw, we recently visited Thornley Kellam in Gloucestershire. It's a fascinating place that does far more than just the Outlaw cars, and so while we were there, we asked Simon Thornley to show us around some of the cars currently on the premises. We're in the restoration building. We've got two buildings. Restoration's the heart of the business. We're just going to have a walk around and see, because there's so many fun things here. That sort of, you know, if, you, if anybody that walks in here, this is the idea with these things, when they walk in, you can just imagine, as I did this morning, you're going, oh, that's that. Oh, that's. So it's just nice to show people what you have here. So this is the last complete restoration that we've done. Full nut and bolt restoration. Very rare car, as you know. Lots of fakes out there. So uh, the owner was very, very fastidious in terms of his own research before he bought the car. He put us in touch with a Belgian guy who's the uh, historian about these cars. In fact, he once found a fake which he bought. And when he realized it was a fake, rather than do it, he destroyed it, which is pretty amazing, frankly. Yeah. For those who don't know, just uh, so quickly. It's a Bizzarini 5300 GT Strada. Uh, Giotto Bizzarini uh, left Lamborghini and, of course, it also worked at Ferrari at one point. He designed the engine that went in the Mura and that, that engine carried on until actually until, not that long no, ago. No, it was an LP674 SV in yeah. 2010 or whatever it was. Yeah, so that, astonishing that finally really. sort of, they couldn't bring any more yeah. from it. And it was but a, he, he determined he wanted to build his own car. Of course, sadly and ironically, he couldn't put his own engine in, so it's an American engine in there. But it, it, you know, it is um, a Bertone, Bertone body. I can't remember the number they made, but it's less than 200. And done absolutely to original factory spec, colors, everything. One just finished. And then, well, um, this oh, well, is the car that... <laughs> this is the car actually... <laughs> ten that, years that ago. started the business <laughs> ten years ago. Yeah, originally it was my car because Wayne had found it. I'd previously had a DB4, um, but it was a Series 5 Vantage, so it looked like a uh, DB5. I think the DB4 Series 2 is the... If you can't afford a GT, this is the one to have. It's a shorter, shorter body. It's got the beautiful cathedral rear lamps, bigger scoop perfect proportions it all it all fits with the golden mean the architectural ratios and all that stuff and so this we restored started doing it for me which is how we started the business hence that and then we got it through the metal stage and i sold it to fund developing the business to the next stage bought by um an obsessive in the nicest possible way very very tall australian architect who came over saw the car loved it we spent hours going through every tiny detail of how it should be. Well, I'll give you a simple example. So yeah. when you look at any DB4, if you just quickly look at the depth there between the bottom of the quarter light and there, and if you look at that, the way that that crease forms, and then you come around and look at this one, it's slightly different, it's deeper, and that's slightly softer. The guy, the guy who bought it off us, it was in bare metal. He said, well, we can't have that. They've got to be the same, they've got to be the same. So we looked at seven or eight other D and they were all like this. So that's how it And we assume be. it's because, again, Bill, Bill made yeah, that yeah. side. And, yeah. yeah, and um, absolutely. So we kept it as it should be. And, and it was a real journey for us. So this is very early in our business and we took it to the Aston Martin National Concourse and it came second. He drives it like he stole it. He, he leaves a list of um, issues when he comes back from three or four weeks driving it. This year, one of the things was there's a slight vibration at the back over 120 miles an hour. <laughs> Excellent. My sort of chat. How do we sort that out? So here we are, this is the, the other building. This it's is enormous, building. isn't it? It, it, is, is. <laughs> it is. Well, we it's wanted a, half of it. This is yours. This, this, this Fulvia. Which is Fulvia. just... Yeah. Um, and right-hand drive. And right-hand drive. Very rare, actually. So this car... Um, I was told about this car by Giovanni Di Virgilio, who's a friend now, uh, who lives in Rome, and his father designed and built the, the Aurelia V6 engine. And so we'd see each other in Rome sometimes, and he said, oh, oh you should buy this car. It's a, it's a right-hand drive car, perfect for the English market, and it's a 1.6 HF. So I flew to Rome, saw it, looked a bit tired than this, but had lived in Rome its whole life. And I said, well, why is it right-hand drive? And he said, well, there are, there are still many Lanchisti who believe that a pure Lancia is right-hand drive because, for example, the B20, it was only in the fourth series in 1955, late 54, early 55, that they started making a left-hand drive version. So this car had spent its whole life in Rome with its black plate, Rome number plates and its uh, an unmolested uh, 1971.6 HF 
um, which is the only car I've ever driven which, although it's front wheel drive, you forget it's front wheel drive and it corners like it's on rails actually. It doesn't look like it should be front wheel drive, does it? No, it so doesn't. It's, it's and so of course, it... Lancia weren't. Um, and then Fessier came in and, and took, the, took them over. Uh, and in the early 60s, he was the, the main engineer and he shifted them towards front wheel drive and the Flavia, I think the Flavia was the first example. Somebody, if you put that in, will tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> but that, yeah, they kind of shifted uh, towards front wheel drive cars. We'll mention it very briefly <laughs> very because briefly. You, can't, you can't really ignore can't it really sometimes. It, no. <laughs> um, so we, th we have a good client who's local. Um, we, we've done a few cars for him and he bought this as his, literally his party car. And um, he's decided he's through partying with it. So it's, it's going off uh, to auction, I think. Uh, and we've just maintained it for him for about the last four years and stored it for him. These are rather lovely, and you're saying these were built alongside the... So the Flaminia, of which you'll see when we go to restoration, that we're, we're restoring a couple of super sport Zagato Flaminias. The Flaminia was in four variants, actually. The Berlina, which is the big Rolls-Royce-like um, saloon, very luxurious. The Pininfarina Coupe. And then the touring body cars, which were known as the GT, Coupe and Convertible. And then the, the, the Zagato bodies, which are known as Sports. So I think that these, in particular, are a bargain in the classic car world and probably the most undervalued um, Lancia variant of, of that 50s, 60s era. Because that car, 1962 I think this one is, three carburetor variant, coupe, super leggera, built at Touring, next to a DB4, as indeed is the single car, 1960 car behind it, the open car, they are, that's just into six figures of value. And the one behind is probably 140,000 pounds. Put the Astons next to them and yeah. Yeah. times four, times yeah. possibly times five for the convertible actually. So I recognize it's not an Aston Martin, but engineering wise, it's probably better. Driving wise on a twisty road, it's better, but not as powerful and doesn't have the iconic Aston look, so I've got to be careful. <laughs> but I just think they're great cars. Should you walk down to the back and just see the 328 down here? Because it's yes. really, really lovely, isn't it? It's just this sort of dove grey. They are f possibly the best, I've got to be careful again, <laughs> one of the best driving engineered pre-war cars. You know, these cars were still winning rallies in the 50s. Um, they're so well made and they're, to drive they're, they're fantastic. You know, Just they're, such a really pretty it's sort a of pretty car, they're well made, you know, re re reasonably powerful, six cylinder engine, just a, gr a great thing. And uh, we've got one in the other building owned by the same guy uh, and he's Norwegian and we had to go over to Norway to take the engine out, <laughs> have it rebuilt, send it back, put it in, get the car going and bring the whole car over for us to do the the bare metal repaint that he wanted. So all to do with Norwegian all to export do with laws. Norwegian export like laws. So we will do pretty much what the client wants. It seems the... funny seeing. And you see this next huge. to this, yeah. <laughs> and in fact, there's four years difference. I think this is 34 and this is 38 from memory. So this is a Rolls Royce Phantom II Continental. It's a complete restoration, probably the biggest one we've ever done in every sense. <laughs> It's got hydraulic power steering, it's got internal telephony, internal music, internal refrigeration, air conditioning, all sorts. That's amazing. All sorts. But it's all yeah. hidden away. So it's all hidden away. Sort of, it's yes, all hidden away. Absolutely. So moving over here. Okay, this so this is uh, a rare Zagato car. Body. Uh, this is a Zagata bodied Appia Sport. So it's the short wheelbase variant. This is a 1963 car. Very rare. I think they made perhaps around 50. Um, quite popular for rallying. This is owned by an English guy and we've been through it and rebuilt the front suspension, rewired it, done the, the gearbox and just generally just through beautiful, it. Isn't and it they're just, just fantastic really, really things. Yeah. Th these are bits of a group four Stratos <laughs> that we're putting together for um, ready for next year's Tour Auto. And these two uh, Citroëns, Taxi Avant, are both going to the, the Peking to Paris rally uh, next May. Um, and so they're both being prepared for that event and our motorsport um, mechanic is in fact driving the second car which will support the owner in his car. This is a Ferrari 250 GT that again we fully restored, nut and bolt restoration um, a couple of years ago and it's come back for a bit of suspension work 
and a rattle at the rear end, so we're just sorting that out. And then I think we should finish with finally one more of your cars. Fine. Just, <laughs> just up yeah, there. Yeah, mine are the ones that are lying around and have been here for a long time. We've got two Lancia Ardeas, which were actually never officially imported into the UK. Lancia, small car, again, a pre war design that carried on through, uh, I think, till about 19, through the 50, early 50s. Um, this is an early example, which apparently was on the stand of the London Motor Show, uh, Lancia stand, just got a special interior. Um, early car, and then that's a, the late series car, which of course it's mine because there's no engine in it. The world's first five-speed production gearbox was in the Lancia Ardea. And you've got to show us. And um, <laughs> one of the re I love Lancia for its design, integrity, its engineering, and just uh, things like that. What can so you say? Good, <laughs> and the doors, you've got to show us oh, the doors. Oh, and the doors. As well. yes. So there are lots of pillarless. This, this period, so there's an Ardea, Aprilia, and the B21, are all pillarless designs. So, apart from being very practical for an entry and access, um, exiting, when you do that. What a way to finish. This is a 1949 <laughs> car. Perfect. Fantastic, isn't it? Thank you very much indeed. Okay. That's um, fascinating to look around. <laughs>